Hi, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> thank you to the Porto One team for the invitation and the opportunity to speak. Um, <clears throat> today, I'm going to cover, in 15 minutes or less, quite a complex topic. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to make it as uh, uncomplex as possible. I'm going to talk about the benefits of combining policy control with online charging. So before we get into it, let me just set the context. We're talking about data services, mobile data services in particular, and we're talking about real-time service charging, right? So before we get into that, a little bit about who we are as Pharos. Uh, we're a, a telco software supplier that serves the MNO market in Africa, Europe, Middle East, and a little bit in Asia Pacific. Um, we also serve the MVNO market. We have a number of MVNO clients. And one of the, in the last three years, years or so, we have focused on a, a product that, to Roman's point, makes it easy. We provide an integration layer between the core network and MVNOs because it is technically challenging, as you mentioned, to integrate uh, into the core, into your packet gateways, into uh, the network infrastructure of a mobile operator. Um, we've worked together with Porter One for the last three years, and we have integrated our policy control system with, with Porter. So we've got quite a lot of experience in this regard, and uh, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the following slides. So online charging systems are great. They can rate and bill in real time. Um, <coughs> If you add policy control to the equation, there are quite a few more things that you can do in terms of creating compelling products and services to your customer because a PCRF can do, it has some tricks up its sleeve, which I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. So there's a couple of things that are unique uh, to policy control. One of them is the ability to control the bit rate of, on a per subscriber basis, on a per APN basis, the speed of your connection. It's a set of levers that only the PCRF can operate uh, in terms of the packet gateway. The second thing is the, the uh, PCRF or the policy controller, uh, PCRF is a, <laughs> an LTE term. I use policy control as a broad term. Uh, our solution spans network generations, but let's just call it policy control for now. Um, it allows you to install and remove charging rules. So charging rules are interesting animals. They can be static, they can be dynamic, but ultimately what they do is they allow you to cause certain traffic to be classified um, and be associated with a particular rating group that uh, will be sent in the charging request to the OCS. So the ability to install and remove charging rules is quite an important function. And it's not limited to this, but these are the big ones. <coughs> the PCRF or the policy controller can subscribe to network events. So what does that mean? Um, the policy controller can ask the network to tell, to inform um, when a customer changes location, for example, or it can subscribe to a uh, radio access network change or a quality of service change. There's about 10 parameters you, you can subscribe to. So a whole bunch of things that uh, you get access to to inform a policy decision that, that uh, the policy controller uh, makes available. So because it's a bit of a uh, hard thing to explain, I'm going to use an analogy. Uh, I like analogies, as those who know me, I, I use a lot of analogies. Um, and I like aircraft too, so I'm going to use an aircraft analogy. So if you can imagine a, an aircraft, uh, a cockpit, it has a bunch of controls, it has throttles, it has uh, speed brakes, flaps, a yoke, a rudder, etc. It has a flight management system, it has a computer. Um, let's put that into context and try and explain this, this analogy uh, to make it work. So imagine that your packet gateway is the, the aircraft and the passengers inside are, are your subscribers. So. <clears throat> The cockpit has a pilot and there are controls. The controls are things that the um, the levers that the, the packet, the policy controller can pull to control the aircraft, right? You can make the aircraft go faster, you can make it ascend, you can make it descend, you can make it bank left or right. 
um, the cockpit is the only place in the aircraft that can exert control over the aircraft. And similarly, the policy controller is the only thing in the network that can control the experience, uh, subscriber experience, uh, because the packet gateway only listens to the policy controller. The policy controller also listens to the online charging system, right? A very important part of this equation. Why? Because the charging system knows details about the customer. It knows what products they purchase, it knows what price plan they're on, it knows their balance. And when events happen on the charging system, the policy controller gets told about it, which can inform a policy decision. So you've got this, let's call it a, I normally draw a triangle to illustrate this, but um, hmm. It's a bit of a sideways uh, try. It's a cooperative set of interactions. None of these systems uh, operate in isolation. So a couple of, uh, by no means an exhaustive set of use cases, but let's just get down to brass tacks, get, to, to get down to some use cases. So um, let's start with zero rated services, right? Operators and MVNOs need to offer some services free of charge to their customers, uh, your mobile app, your self-care portal, the ability to recharge, maybe certain recharge channels. Um, whenever you, as an operator or an MVNO, offer a service for free, you create a potential revenue leakage hole that will be exploited, not can be exploited. It will be exploited, and I see some <laughs> nods. <laughs> yes, um, this is a big problem. Uh, but it's not an insurmountable problem. It's one that can be managed cooperatively between charging system and policy controller. Uh, one of the ways of doing that is to set a daily limit for the services that you want to offer for free to your customer. So you have zero rated management. You have maybe a daily wallet, 50 megs, 100 megs, something like that. You classify the traffic that you want to offer for free. And if you exceed that quota, the free traffic that was formerly free becomes normally charged. And you, you basically close that hole and discourage people from, uh, I have to stop myself, I was gonna say abusing your network, but it's not abuse. If you make a hole and people go through it, well, it's your problem, not, uh, not the subscriber's problem. <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, social bundles. Uh, it was mentioned earlier that uh, you want the opportunity to upsell, uh, you want to bundle services and products, you want to cooperate with other providers, uh, policy control allows you to do that. It allows you to separately classify uh, traffic, treat it differently, and have customers purchase a, a bundled product or service uh, that, that can differentiate your offering. It's a huge topic. I don't have time to go too much into that, uh, other than to say we've implemented this with some MVNOs uh, in this market. Fair usage policies, I've got a whole separate set of slides on that. We'll get into that just now. Uh, voice over LTE guaranteed bitrate uh, is something that is mandatory uh, uh, or PCRF is mandatory to offer the service. Um, the PCRF has many interfaces. Um, I'm not going to get into technical jargon, but um, let's just say uh, certainly our policy controller supports Volti and we have deployments around that. Um, and then location aware services. These are some things that I'm going to share because I think it can pique your interest and just make you think differently about how products can be offered when you include location into your, uh, your matrix. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's get into fair usage policy. So you probably don't normally associate a fair usage policy in the MVNO space. You normally associate that with a, a fixed wireless service or an ISP fixed line service, um, an uncapped data product normally. Um, <clears throat> and just to build on some earlier points that, you know, some myths about MVNOs, it's not just a retail product. MVNO can extend into other market verticals. And <clears throat> what PCRF can do in terms of fair usage, and, and the example I'm gonna give you here is a, a, a 40 megabit per second data product with a monthly fair usage cap of 100 gig. So what would normally happen? Your customer would uh, consume your product, get their decent line rate up to 
100 gigs. Let's, uh, for argument's sake, say that this happened uh, on the, I don't know, 15th of the month, right? You hit the cap, what happens? Well, the policy controller is informed by the charging system or another data collection source, but in this case, let's use the charging system. This mic is... Um, and you get throttled down to a lower bit rate. Uh, fair usage policies can be multi-tiered. Let's, for this illustration here, say you throttle down to a really terrible, unusable bit rate, uh, which, which often happens. This, in general, will result in an unhappy customer, right? And for the traditional fair usage policy, the customer is left with very few options. They either have to wait for the product to reset next month, or they have to buy another SIM, or they have to, you know, consider uh, other, other alternatives. Uh, what I would like to put on the table here is that there is something else that can be done here, specifically when it comes to um, a policy-based fair usage policies, and that is you can create an upsell opportunity to sell a booster pack that will return you to your full line rate for whatever duration you require, whatever your product rules specify. Um, and that way you get to retain your customer and uh, yay, <laughs> you have a happy customer, right? So fair usage policies, you, you can actually turn that around and it doesn't have to be a negative thing. People tend to hate fair usage policies, but you can turn that into an opportunity. There are just a couple of slides on on fixed wireless. <clears throat> so fixed wireless and geofencing in particular, um, in this market, it's it's quite active. There's many uh, operators that, pr that offer these things, but I would argue um, none of them really offer a, uh, a compelling value proposition or it's not without problems. So I'll go from one extreme to the other. I'm not gonna mention any names. <clears throat> Let's just say that um, some operators, when you exceed your authorized usage, so when you sign up for your fixed wireless product, so where do you live? They'll check a map through a GIS system. They say, right, go take your device home, turn it on, and it'll register in the place where it's authorized to be used, right? Happy days. You use the product, it works, you, you pay your monthly bill, and off you go. What will happen traditionally is that when you exceed the boundaries of your geofence, your service will be suspended. And that's a, a suspend that, A, is a very bad customer experience, B, will generate calls to customer services, and C, is very hard to reinstate. Um, again, I'm not gonna mention names, but uh, if you take that device back to its authorized uh, designated place of use, it's not just gonna start working again. It has to be reactivated because it's been suspended. With policy control, instead of cutting your subscriber off, because they are a subscriber after all and you want to render a service and you want them to pay you, there's a couple of options. Once you exceed, let's say you take the device away from home, well, in this case, um, you can drop their bit rate to a lower bit rate, right? This isn't necessarily going to encourage them to, to take it home, but it is going to reduce the, the speed of the connection and Similarly, when they return it back home, it's just going to start working at the normal line rate again. It's one way of encouraging customers to um, comply with the T's and C's, right? Again, I don't want to say that they were misbehaving or anything. It's the product rule. Alternatively, also using uh, location-based policies, if you've got a customer and they, they're using their device at home, they benefit from the lower per megabit rate that you get from a fixed wireless product. When you take it out of its designated um, place of use, a higher per megabit rate charge, uh, is charged. And of course, you would want to tell the customer by way of some communication path that, uh, hey, your device is now not where it is intended to be used and uh, it's incurring a higher charge. If the customer repents and decides to take it back to uh, its uh, place of use, it's just gonna return to normal. So a completely seamless experience, no uh, suspending, unsuspending, no calls to customer care, hopefully, 
they might complain why the bit rates drop but you need to communicate you, you can send triggers to your customer when when these events happen but it's just an example of how you can create a seamless experience using real-time policy control okay we come in for landing so um just to recap uh, when you combine um, OCS and policy control you really get to gain a especially as an MVNO, you get to gain a, a competitive advantage right because you can do things that people who don't have access to this cannot do and it allows you to create compelling and innovative products that you can offer to your customers and that is the message that i'd like to leave you with so thank you very much for your time